If you want to build a custom PC, you can do that at Ironside Computers. You just pick your own parts and they will put it together so you don't have to do any building yourself. Hey, what's up guys? My name's a friend and yeah, my last video that I uploaded was like a month and a half ago. That was because I was moving countries to Netherlands. Currently, I'm living here. Everything is fine, but uh, there's a lot of paperwork that we have to go through. And there's a lot of waiting when buying a house. So, you know, it's not just buying a candy and that's why it took so long. So currently I'm living here with my girlfriend and once we get everything furnished, I may make a house tour so you can see how everything looks like. Just like I did in the apartment in Lithuania. But anyway, this guy, John the King, made a very good video, by the way. This is probably one of the best videos I've seen. It's like 95% accuracy on all the facts and stuff. It's called From Pima to Permaban, A Friend's Story. And I kind of want to give my own opinion on certain points that he made. But he put so much effort in this video. Like if you look at all these credits, all these videos that he had to go through, pick specific pieces to make the video. I mean, I, I, I have no idea how long this video took to make, but he put so much effort into it. And just listen to his voice is just so professionally made. Davidas Macy's is a 27-year-old YouTube creator best known for formerly being the top content creator for the MMORPG RuneScape. Since he began playing, he has accumulated over 35,000 hours of in-game times. That's right. I, I did play RuneScape. In total, I think it's around uh, 36,000 hours right now. I think it averages like seven or eight hours every single day. It's kind of funny when people say like, oh, I played CSGO for like 4,000 hours, and I'm like, ha that's nothing. Won several awards while simultaneously being flown out to Jagex headquarters in England to meet the developers of RuneScape and was given possibly the highest symbol of trust for any regular player by becoming a player moderator. Soon after, things would take a dark turn, which may or may not have been attributed to his unhealthy habits of playing 16 hours a day and deprivation of what some would consider a fulfilling social life as he would soon lose his player monitor status alongside symbolically losing the support of Jagex, which would lead him to receive a total of four bans. Alright, so four bans. Um... This band that I got for uh, Infinite Bug Abuse, uh, I talked to even to JMods when I was uh, in last RuneFest in 2017. I, I think it was, I, I don't remember if it was RuneFest, but uh, basically this, is, this one is good. I reported it. Uh, I abused the bug, but I didn't release the video until the bug was fixed. So everyone was fine with it, including the JMods. Hardcore Iron Man got banned for botting. This was because I was using the RuneScape HD client, which means... I wasn't even botting, and I was confident by Jagex, I was not botting, it was just that I was using that HD client, which triggered the system. And then there is message to Jagex and community, banned on all accounts, this was an actual legit ban instead of some weird thing that I was testing with a new update. And be the center of several controversies, most focusing on his questionable sponsorships and how he decided to advertise them. But forming a conclusion into what might have gone wrong wouldn't be fair without telling his full story. So let's go back to late 2004. While attending IDAS Middle School, 14-year-old Davidas was introduced to RuneScape through his classmates during a computer class. It was here that he would create his first account, Doviz77, and would later on at only level 64 combat receive his first ban for what he describes as password scamming. Yeah, okay, so w what I used to do back then, it actually worked. Uh, I would just type in that, uh, wow, Jagex won't let you type your password, and then try it yourself, and people would type their passwords in-game. I don't know if that actually worked, but this was back in 2005, and I got punished for it already. After this ban, he would go on to make another account under the username Pagalpa02, and with this account, Dovidas would begin paying for membership, further increasing his interest in... Three years later, on May 13th, 2009, the Eraser Gaming YouTube channel was created. Eraser, as that was a standard username Dovidas would use for most online games, and gaming because that's what his channel was primarily focused on. Contrary to popular belief, Dovidas would not begin with uploading RuneScape videos, but instead with footage of PlayStation 1 and PlayStation Portable games. These videos did not include any commentary and would accumulate up to 20 views per video. <laughs> I love this part. Accumulate up to 20 views per video, because it's true. I, w I had like 700 videos that I uploaded from uh, PlayStation 1 gameplays. No commentary, just just play through. Some of them would do really well. They would have like 100k views or something. 
but yeah, most of them, I didn't have like a fan base. Nobody really looked forward for me uploading another video because it's just plain gameplay. It's also estimated that around this time, he was studying philology, which is the study of language, and more specifically, English and German, which would be studied at his local university. One year later, on February 16, 2010, the channel's slow shift to RuneScape-focused content would begin, with a 23-second video that showcases the loot from 150 Desert Striker Worms. Several months later, and after the release of Frost Dragons, another video with a similar structure would be uploaded. Within a week, this video would gain 70,000 views and foreshadow what his channel would become. It was from here that Dovidas would continue to follow the same pattern of uploading videos focused on PS1 and PSP games until the release of The Revenant Caves in 2011. As there was very little coverage on this update and the drop rates were relatively unknown, Dovidas decided to take matters into his own hands and on February 2nd, 2011, exactly one day after The Revenant Caves were released, Dovidas showcased himself killing 50 Revenant Dragons, which is the strongest of all the Revenants. You know what's funny about this video? Uh, the Revenant video it has like almost half a million views, but literally the whole video shows me getting coins except for one drop, which I got the best drop, which was Ancient Statuette. But the whole video was sped up of me getting coins. I don't know what I was thinking about it. It's just coins, coins, coins. I'm very surprised that the video did that well, to be honest. And in similar fashion to his previous videos, this video was primarily focused on the loot that was obtained. Allegedly, four more videos were uploaded within the time span of several months, covering the Revenant drop table, which would boost the Racer Gaming to over 1 million total views, yep. and prompt Ovidas to remove over 750 PS1 and PSP gameplay videos as he began making a transition into RuneScape content. Also within this time period, he would go on to make a second channel under the name of PC Trainers, where the general focus of this channel was to show the viewer how to make single-player mods for various different games. Dovidas is dedicated. Uh, okay, so a lot of people had a problem with that channel. Uh, I want to say that that channel basically exploits games, single-player games. There's no multiplayer games. It's single-player only. There's no harm in that. If you want to make custom cheats for that, custom scripts, there's no problem with that. I don't see some... I don't see how people could have even a problem with that, really. Cation to creating YouTube videos was made clear on May 16, 2011, as he announced he will be releasing a series of 10-hour loot videos, and behind the scenes, he will begin working up to 16 hours a day. This would be his first step in a very successful, but considerably unhealthy career. Uh, maybe in two days, maybe in three days, I'll start making these series, and I'll be, um, yeah, every day, a different boss, I'm going to be showing you results and in seven days, I'll see how much I can do in seven days. So yeah, that's what we will see. And uh, here we go. We're back to the sexy voice again. And so for the following year, his channel followed a pattern of loot and other vlog style videos. And I think it's fair to say that these videos were like no other. While most RuneScape videos covered gear setups or were simply a compilation of PvP kills, Dovidas' birth of loot videos brought a much sought after analytical PvM style videos that the RuneScape community had not seen. It's very weird though, when I think about it, it's like seriously at the time there were no proper loot videos, like you couldn't find them. I had to make like on every single boss, even if it was outdated, like King Black Dragon or something, I would just make a loot video and people would watch. Seriously, at the time there were no loot videos and I was like, hmm, maybe I can fill that gap and make a few videos and I did. They got the views and I continued making and from there it kind of snowballed into something different. You know, reviewing updates, making progress videos, not just the loot videos that I used to make. Next year, Dovidas would finally start making money from his channel, and although creators that lived in Lithuania could not monetize their videos because monetization was simply not available in their country, True. many people found a loophole to this and partnered with networks such as Machinima, which is stationed in the US. And what these networks usually did is claim your videos in exchange for a cut of the revenue, which is exactly what Dovidas did. So on April 2012, Eraser Gaming became a profitable and promising venture as there was now something to show for it. It was around the same time that Dovidas would drop out of his university and with perfect timing as he could find success making RuneScape videos like the creators he had previously admired. This yep. cash flow was evident to the viewers as almost one month later, Dovidas' audio quality would improve tremendously as he began using a new high quality microphone that would allow him to stand out for most other channels. That so I'm still using the same microphone. I changed it one time because it broke, but I'm still using the same model microphone. 
And th that's the thing. I got paid only for 10 days because of the contract when I signed. And the first thing that I bought, even though I had money, the first thing that I bought was a good microphone. Because I was like, I want to invest in this. I want to get buy a good microphone. The next month, I actually bought a PC. So for like two months, I almost had no money. This is one of the first times where I actually had money to spend. But I was like, no, 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 no. In invest in this. This is something really good is going to happen from this. I had a feeling and his bassy voice would only serve to gather a larger following. Next month on the 21st, Dovinas would go on to release his first question and answer video. We would learn a bit more about who Eraser Gaming really was, his name, his country of origin, and his personal life. Uh, hey friend, I wanted to ask you what do you do in real life when you don't play RuneScape? Do you have any hobbies or play any sports? YouTube is YouTube and RuneScape is my job. Okay, people need to understand that and the more I do this the more I get paid I try to spend all of my time all of my like weekends all day All I do is make videos think of ideas uh, play RuneScape and Because the more I do this the more I get the views I get the more views I get more money just over one year after Dovidas' channel got monetized, he would go on to purchase his first apartment that he had bought through the money he had made from his channel. It's also here that we learn that he is making around $3,000 a month, which is more than most doctors earn in his country. So, I was getting paid, I was getting paid really a lot for Machinima compared to what people make in here in Lithuania. I was getting paid like more than doctors get paid. You would assume it's not a, nothing much, you know. 3,000 would probably be more than doctors would make in this country at least. So it's nothing much to people who live in England or the United States, you know, but yeah. So you can actually make a living from YouTube. Uh, by the way, I still have that apartment. I, I'm planning to sell it, but I still have that apartment. If I, if I want to go back just to chill a little bit for a week or something, I can do that. With the growth of his channel and his fear oh, look, of influencing, look, that's me. Oh man, what I st man, I was still not balding at this point because uh, I'm balding from the back now too. But here is like, mm. oh, I'll, look, look at me, look at me. This was 2013, five years ago. Looked very cute back then. Expanding during September of 2013, the owners and developers of RuneScape flew Dovidas and nine other influencers out to Jagex headquarters at Cambridge, oh, United look Kingdom. At me. It was here where him and nine others were given the oh, player yeah. moderator status, which is a status given to a select few players trusted by the company that allows them to report and eventually mute rule breakers in the game. This status will no doubt give newly found responsibility to Dovidas, knowing his actions and videos somewhat represented Jagex. Later on during the same year at RuneFest 2013, which is a RuneScape convention ran by Jagex, Eraser Gaming won a Golden Gnome Award, which is an award given to top influencers. He won the category of Best Guides, but unfortunately, as Dovidas did not attend, the physical Golden Gnome was meant to be given to him possibly through mail, but it never arrived due to the lack of coordination from Jagex. Yeah, also I went like, obviously I went to Jagex multiple times after that and I asked JMods like what's happening, multiple JMods and at the end of the day they told me, look, we don't know where it is, we, we don't know anything, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So I think it's lost permanently. I only have one golden gnome now on my table. Over the next two years, the channel name Eraser Gaming would be changed to a friend, and the channel would steadily grow from 20,000 subscribers to a whopping 200,000. At this point, a friend will be regarded as one of, if not the top, RuneScape creator, and to celebrate on April 26, 2015, a friend would release his second question and answer video, giving the viewers a follow-up to his previous Q&A and allow us to see what had changed in his personal life, but we would find out that not much outside of RuneScape and YouTube had changed. Do you have a girlfriend or a wife? I uh -huh. hate when people say a wife because that makes me feel so old, but no, I don't have any of those. Um, at the moment, actually, it feels like it would be a waste of time because currently I am just focusing on making videos and maybe eventually my mind will change. You know, some people don't want kids, but eventually five years later, they have a kid because they start wanting them. What do you do in real life besides playing RuneScape? I don't actually do too much. I don't go out too much. I play RuneScape pretty much all day and I go to to buy food so I don't die. And when I go to buy food, I actually pick okay. a shop that is very far away from me. 
so at least I get some kind of exercise. But yeah, that's all. I mean, I cannot think of anything. It was also around this time that the tension between Russia and Ukraine was peaking, prompting countries like Lithuania, which is where a friend lives, to militarize. This meant that compulsory military service was reinstated, meaning that select Lithuanian citizens would have to receive mandatory military training for nine months. And as luck may have it, a friend received a letter in the mail saying that he would have to be drafted to attend mandatory military training. And for those who don't know, I actually received a letter from a military saying that I will have to do mandatory military service for nine months. He immediately received support from creators and viewers alike as he would have to haul all video production for nine months and most likely lose half of his audience on YouTube by doing so. But with some quick thinking, this situation was averted by a friend stating to his immigration office that Okay, this is some illegal stuff. Nothing happened. Uh, I mean, I'm too old now for the military service because they uh, only get up to 27 year olds. And since I'm now 28, I, I don't even have to do this. But uh, yeah, I don't think what I did was too legal here that he lived in a different country while actually staying in Lithuania. Yeah, the thing is I never moved. What, what I did is I went online. I didn't even have to go to any office. I just go went online, switched my location, took one day, and they said, oh, now you live in Latvia. So they never, after that, I never received anything else. And that's how easy it was. I mean, it worked. I don't know, I just don't agree with that kind of stuff like forced military service. Like I'm doing my own thing for like a few years and suddenly they say you can't do this anymore you have to go with us and you have to leave everything behind i'm i'm sorry it just doesn't make any sense i know it's just a video game i'm literally avoiding military service to play a video game but at the same time it is my job and most people should understand that that it's really if you leave for nine months it's probably gonna kill your channel you're gonna lose really that's just how youtube works you can see it based on other channels that have took long long breaks like that for a year or something once they come back the original audience is uh is gonna be not as big yeah. while all seemed great and a friend could continue making videos another issue was soon to come later in the year on september 14th a friend uploaded a video titled top 10 fish loot which included screenshots of expensive in-game items obtained via phishing and as you would expect, phishing or password stealing is heavily against game rules. On this same day, a friend's player moderator status would be revoked, which symbolically meant he was no longer endorsed by Jackix. And although it may be uncorrelated, after this day, various screenshots would emerge of a Okay, okay. Uh, I'll get back to the screenshots. Uh, one second. Uh, by the way, when my PMOD status was removed, I was still fine with Jagex. Like, nothing, you know, they still invited me and stuff, so it wasn't like... It was just like symbolic, just like he said. It's like, okay, don't do that. And as much as I wish to read the comments that are right now on the screen, I think they're not really YouTube friendly. So I'm gonna uh, put a black screen Friends right there. saying and doing some things that some would consider controversial, but others like this as it felt that he was somewhat unleashed and allowed all parts, including the controversial areas of his personality to flourish. Nearly one year after losing his player monitor status, at RuneFest 2016, a friend would go on to win top old school video maker. It was also at this point that a friend would focus primarily on making old school RuneScape content, which would mostly be done through his Hardcore Iron Man series, where he would play RuneScape as, well, a Hardcore Iron Man. Meaning that he would lose the ability to trade with other players, and dying in an unsafe location in the game would revoke his Hardcore Iron Man status. It should be noted that he had previously made pseudo Iron Man accounts on both RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape, but now that the game mode was made official, not only did it make things more interesting to watch, but you could also see where he fared compared to other hardcore Ironmen. And this game mode is what a friend would focus on for the following year as he would continue to upload videos demonstrating on how he progressed the account in a sort of vlog style format. He would continue doing this until 2017, which is also considered the year a friend fell from grace. It should also be noted that this same year he received two bans on RuneScape. One, for using a third-party client that RuneScape's anti-cheat system flagged as a botting client, which is a program that essentially plays the game for you. 
But this was quickly resolved as a staff member of Jagex found out that the client was not one used for botting but instead simply changed the textures in game. The second time was for abusing a bug that allowed players to reproduce a somewhat valuable item. This was only a two day ban and he would later upload a video demonstrating that he had dropped all reproduced items and the purpose of abusing the bug was to show his audience how harmful the bug was to the game before it was patched. Keem next was much worse than any other ban. On September 8th, 2017, a friend uploaded a video titled, This Is How It Ends. He had finally died on his Hardcore Ironman account, meaning that he could no longer compete with other Hardcore Ironmen. And as many would quickly note, his uploads would begin to slow down as he had possibly lost his motivation to make videos. There was some hope though as 2018 started with a poll asking his audience if they'd rather see him play on his old Ironman account or create a new hardcore Ironman. And out of 41,000 votes, 63% voted in favor of creating a new account. And so he did, but where his first Ironman account lasted nearly one year before it died, this one did not even make it a month. Oh, man. His next video would receive severe oh. backlash as he announced he would be including in-video advertisements twice a month that would last around 30 seconds. I should add that it was from this point onward that most of his videos would have a 50 to 50 like to dislike ratio. And his next video, just like the last one, would also receive extreme backlash as it was clips of a livestream he did receiving in-game donations from fans and promised that the items he received in-game would be used to make content. But many of his viewers disliked this as they felt he was selling out or he would use the items to further himself personally rather to make content. And the first video he uploaded of using the donations only served as a catalyst to fuel the hatred and distrust building up in the community and is easily the most disliked video on his channel as he was knowingly giving his donated wealth to players known for scamming to gauge their reaction. So now the players that donated felt that their money hadn't gone to creating interesting content but rather feeding the most untrustworthy players in RuneScape. From here, the uploads will come to a crawl, where a friend would once upload every two to three days, now he would only upload a video every week or so. He would also address this in a video stating that he was beginning to consider the mental health of playing such long hours and the lack of updates that the game has to cover. Hey what is up guys, my name's a friend and I just wanted to make a video because a lot of people have been asking what the hell is happening with the upload schedule because it's uh, sometimes I upload to like three times in a week, sometimes I don't upload for like, I think it was like nine days at some point even. So basically maybe like six months ago, I stopped playing RuneScape 16 hours a day because I think most of you know that I used to play RuneScape really a lot, especially when Hardcore Iron Man came out, I really no lifed. Like sometimes I would play like 18 hours every day and I would lose sleep and pretty much what would happen is me playing RuneScape all day, go to bed, wake up, play RuneScape again, and it's not really healthy. So this is very true actually. I've been making videos for the past six years or so and I try to put as much time as I can in RuneScape and I think eventually it's like uh, it got me to the point where it's like dude you've been playing this 16 hours almost every single day and you know I don't mean necessarily go out and do something outside but even things like how about you try playing other games you have this Ironside PC, right, with Titan V inside it. Still one of the best right now, and all you do is play RuneScape. Like, so, you know, I downloaded a bunch of other games. I found a girlfriend online at the time. Now we live together in real life, but, you know, play games with her and spend, just do something else. Because mentally, I was like, I, I felt like, whoa, it's a little bit, if all you do, imagine you wake up, you play RuneScape, you go to sleep and that's all I did. All I did, I had no like social life or anything. He would then create his third Hardcore Ironman account and for a while the videos received somewhat positive reviews as some would cite it was a return to farm. But this account would see the same fate as the previous two uh -huh. and only last about two months. It was soon after this that a friend would take on a gambling site as a sponsor and would upload a video advertising their services where it was estimated he was offered anywhere from $40,000 to $100,000 for this one video. Uh, okay, we're not gonna talk about that. Not even 24 hours later, he would take the video down and all of his accounts would be permanently banned. And the problem with the website he was sponsoring is not that it endorsed gambling, but rather it encouraged real world trading. So I don't want to go too much into this, but I'm pretty sure I was not banned for real world trading. Uh, even though it says here that the websites could be involved in real world trading, but the actual issue was that 
I was associating with gambling interests. So even though at the time there was no such rule in RuneScape's uh, thing, but uh, nowhere did they say I was banned for that one billion that I accepted or anything. But I mean, yeah, it's... Which is heavily against the game's rules. And again, a friend would apologize to Jagex and his community saying that he needs the money as he's moving to the Netherlands to live with his girlfriend of seven months. Which sucks, because if you watch my stream, you know that I have a girlfriend for like seven months. And I'm moving to Netherlands actually in one month. To live permanently. Completely. I sold out everything I had here. Just go to Netherlands and live. Never come back here. And from this, we learned that Jagex will let him play the game again, but only on new accounts, as all of his previous accounts will remain permanently banned. And during the recording of this video, he has yet to upload a video since, which from my understanding, this is the longest he's gone without uploading a video for a very long time. With the entire RuneScape community watching his next move, the story of Duvidas Macy's, or a friend, is an interesting one. <laughs> I love how he pronounces my name. Uh, it's Dovidas Macy's. But uh, it, it's fine, it's fine. For those wanting my perspective about what's going on with his channel and what I think about his girlfriend, while I don't know his girlfriend personally, I kinda agree that it won't help his channel, but I do hope it will help him as a person because the way he was working up to 16 hours a day and doing nothing else sounds unhealthy and it's an easy way to get depressed. So I think a break from YouTube is actually a good thing, but then again, I am a bit biased because I am a veteran viewer of his and also a fellow content creator. But at this point, I care more about him than his content. I mean, it is sad to see what he's done with his channel and his community, but I'm happy to see that he's found someone that makes him happy, you know? So yeah, that about wraps it up. This has been the rise and fall of a friend. Thank for watching. Well, this was oh, the first time I saw this video, I was like, oh my god, there's so much accurate information. information. I love this guy. And I think he's very right, because in the past one year or so, since I have not been playing as much, only eight hours a day or so, I, uh, I do feel better. I do feel better, especially when I have a girlfriend. It's like, because uh, before that, I was like playing everything alone. I wasn't even talking to anyone on Skype, really, just alone and watch some YouTube video or something or listen to music. So now I feel uh, there's always something to look forward to. Half the day is spent on my computer, half the day spent in real life doing something. And uh, I would say I am fairly in a very happy position, except that I do want to get back to video making. And I know what I did was bad and stuff, but I hope that in the future people will start commenting and liking or disliking videos based on the content itself instead of what I did in the past. Because sometimes I feel like I made a really good video and then it's like have dislikes and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, don't want to go too much deeper in that subject. Thank you very much for watching this video though. And a progress video should be uploaded in a few days. Thank you. Bye.